The Life and Sad Ending of Barry White White was born Barry Eugene Carter on September 12, 1944, in Galveston, Texas, United States. Say the name Barry White and you'd be hard-pressed to follow it with the name of any other recording artist such as a huge cross-selection following. He was at home appearing on Soul Train, guesting with a full band on the Today Show and appearing in cartoon form in various episodes of The Simpsons. During the 70s, Daya Shore devoted her full hour of daily syndicated Dinah show to White. While there was a period where Barry White wasn't releasing records or making the pop charts, he did stay active, touring and appearing on other artists' records, including Quincy Jones's The Secret Garden, Regina Bell, and rap star Big Daddy Kane's All of Me. It's surprising to find out that such an illustrious career almost didn't happen because White wasn't interested in becoming a, record, a recording artist. Born in Galveston, Texas, Barry White grew up singing gospel songs with his mother and taught himself to play the piano. Shortly after moving from Texas to South Central Los Angeles, White made his recording debut with t- at the tender age of 11, playing piano on Jesse Belvin's Good Night, My Love. He made his first record when he was 16 with a group called The Upfronts. The song was called Little Girl on a local L.A. label called Lum Tone Records. Later, he worked for various independent labels around Los Angeles, landing an A&R position with Bob Keen, the man responsible for the first pop rec- recordings by Sam Cooke. One of his labels, Mustang, was hot at the time with a group called Bobby Fuller Four in 1966. White was hired for $40 a week to do AR for Keen's family of labels, Delphi, Mustang, and Bronco. During this time, White flirted with the idea of becoming a recording artist, making a record for Bronco called All in the Run of a Day, but he chose to stick with his A&R duties. One of his first groups he worked with was the Versatiles, who later changed their name to the Fifth Dimension. White's first big hit came from an artist familiar to the dance floor denizens, Viola Wills, who wrote Lost Without Love of the Guy, went top 20 R&B. His salary went up to $60 a week. White started working with Bobby Fuller Four. Bob Keen and Larry Nunes, who later became White's spiritual advisor and true friend, wanted to cut a female act. White had heard about a singer named Felice Taylor. They had three hit records. It may be winter outside, I'm under the influence of love, and I feel love coming on. They were huge hits in England. White started making $400 a week. When Bronco went out of business, White began doing independent production. Those were some lean times for White. Veteran arranged Gene Page, who would later arrange and co-arrange White's hits, helped him out, giving him work on non-repayable loans. Then, three years later, Paul Politti, who also worked at Bronco, contacted him and asked if Larry Nunes was interested in starting business with him. Nunes had started cutting tracks for a concept album when he was working on. Meanwhile, White had started working with this girl group who hadn't done any singing professionally. They rehearsed for almost a year. White wrote, Walking in the Rain with the One I Love, with lyrics that were inspired by conversations with one of the singers, Claudine James, who would later become White's second wife. White christened the group Love Unlimited. Larry Nunes took the record to Ross Reagan, who wanted the head of the uni label owned MCA. Love's Unlimited, from a girl's point of view, became a million-dollar seller. Soon after, Reagan left Uni with the 20th Century Records. Without Reagan, White's relationship with Uni soured. With his relationship with Uni in chaos and Love Unlimited contract bound with a label, White decided he needed to work with another act. He wanted to work with a male artist. He made three song demos of himself singing and playing the piano. Nunes heard them and insisted that he record them and release it as a recording artist. They argued for days about it. Then he somehow convinced White to do it. White was still hesitating up to the time that the label copy was made. He was going to use the name White Heat, but the records became the first Barry White album. That first album was 1973's I've Got So Much to Give on 20th Century Records, 
It included the title track, I'm Gonna Love You, and You Just a Little More Baby. White got a release from Uni and The Love Unlimited and joined him over at 20th Century Records. Then he had a brainstorming for another concept album. He told Reagan he wanted to do an instrumental album. White wanted to call it The Love Unlimited Orchestra. The single, Love's Theme, went to number one pop, was a million seller, and was a smash hit all over the world. The song earned him a BMI award and sold over three million covers. For the next five years, from 1974 to 1979, there was no stopping the Barry White hit train. His own Stone Gone, Barry White sings love songs for the one you love, Let the Music Play, Just Another Way I Say I Love You, The Man. He also scored the soundtrack for 20th Century Fox film The Together Brothers, enjoying a resurgence on home video. Russ Reagan and another ally, Hosea Wilson, left 20th Century Records, and White was left with management that he had thought of in less than glowing terms. White left after fulfilling his contract with two more album releases, Love Unlimited Orchestra's My Musical Bouquet and his other I Love to Sing the Songs I Sing. White signed a custom label deal with CBS Records. At the time, it was touted that one of the biggest deals ever. He started a label called Unlimited Gold. The roster included White, Love Unlimited, the Love Unlimited Orchestra, Jack Perry, and a teenage singer named Danny Pearson, who charted with the song, What's Your Sign, Girl? He also did a duet with Glaudine James called Barry and Glaudine. Aside from the golden album, The Message is Love, most of the albums weren't huge sellers. After eight Barry White albums and four Love Unlimited albums and four Love Unlimited Orchestra albums, constant touring and dealing with rigorous amounts of music industry, White decided to take a break. Then in 1992, White signed with A&M, releasing the albums The Man Is Back, The Right Night, and Barry White, and Put Me In Your Mix. The Icon Is Love became his biggest selling album since the 1970s releases, going multi-platinum. It includes the platinum single, Practice What You Preach. The production lined up including Gerald Leverett, Tony Nicholas, his godson, Chucky Booker, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis, and White, and a longtime friend, Jack Perry. While some later efforts buried his vocals and whiz-bang electronic effects, the icon is love, White's deep stem engine, baritone pipes, are up front in the mix. Saying Powerful, followed in 1999, showcased the best tradition of soul music, where the focus is singing the song. The album earned two White Grammys. White's career took him from the ghetto to international success with 106 gold and 41 platinum albums, 20 gold and 10 platinum singles, and worldwide sales exceeding over 100 million. White, who suffered from hypertension and chronic high blood pressure, was hospitalized for kidney failure in September of 2002. He was undergoing dialysis treatment, but the combination of illness proved too much and he died July 4, 2003 at West Hollywood Hospital. By the time of his death, Barry White had achieved a near universal acclaim and popularity that few artists achieve with even fewer within their own lifetime.